Welcome to Fiduciary Fitness, the podcast that covers all aspects of running your company's retirement plan. My name is Jeff Pincus, and I'm the producer of the show. In today's episode, we begin a multi-part discussion on ESG investing as Elena Pearson Arroyo interviews special guests Clarice Avery and Jonathan Ricketts from Natixis Investment Managers. If you're curious about what the acronym SPINE spine has to do with ESG investing, then this is the episode for you. And now, let's join Elena, Clarice, and Jonathan as they discuss ESG investing. Hi, everybody. My name is Elena Pearson Arroyo, financial wellness strategist with Washington Financial Group. Uh, it is lovely to have everybody here on the podcast today. Today, we are joined by our lovely friends at Natixis. We have Clarice Avery here, uh, and we are also joined today by Jonathan Ricketts. Hi, Elena. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks Thank you for much. flying in to join yeah, us. We absolutely. really appreciate it. Um, so Natixis is a great partner of ours uh, because they are known uh, for a lot of their ESG investing. And so for some of the folks that are listening today, you might think, what the heck are we talking about? What is ESG? So the first question I want to ask you uh, is sort of what is this What is this topic of ESG investing and why does it matter to, to those of us who are, you know, your everyday folk who are participating in a retirement plan, trying to save try, uh, for their future? Yeah, well, so ESG, first of all, stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. Um, there are certainly a lot of applications of that, and it can come through in the investment process in a lot of different ways, so I think I'll touch on that a little bit, um, and then why it might matter for a plan participant. Um, so I think ESG has also become kind of the catch-all phrase for any type of investment approach that considers environmental, social, and governance factors in some way. Um, one of our portfolio managers uses the acronym SPINE, uh, which I kind of like because it, it um, kind of is, is easy to remember as an acronym and it gives it structure just like the SPINE gives your body structure. So um, the S would stand for sustainability integration. So that's really thinking about ESG risks and opportunities from a financial perspective, integrating that into the overall investment process, not necessarily with any environmental or social outcomes intended. Um, and then the P would be uh, a positive selection approach. So wanting to identify companies and invest in those companies that are doing things better as it relates to ESG um, and managing their ESG risks better than their peers. Uh, the I would be impact. So uh, an investment approach that aims to really invest in assets or in companies that are providing solutions, uh, environmental or social solutions, and actually providing true impact. Sometimes that comes um, first and foremost in the process versus a return first process. Um, and then the N would be a negative screening approach, and that typically um, historically has been called SRI, or socially responsible investing, which um, is sometimes based on religious values, um, screening out sin stocks like alcohol, tobacco, weapons, things like that. Um, again, maybe performance isn't necessarily the first uh, consideration there. It's really just about excluding the bad stuff. And then the last one would be the E, which is engagement. So owning companies uh, which may or may not have good ESG qualities, um, but owning them in order to engage with company management to ho hopefully promote change from within. So obviously there are a lot of different approaches, all with varying um, intended outcomes, both from a financial performance perspective as well as from an environmental and social perspective. So from sort of a, an investor perspective or a plan participant perspective, you really want to understand what the types of approaches are and what the outcomes might be. And, and so that's kind of what we think about as we talk to um, plan participants and retirement plan sponsors as well, is really considering those things and making sure that what the type of approach that you're using actually fits within the overall objectives of the plan. Yeah, I think when we started talking about ESG and SRI, there wasn't much of a differentiation between the two. Uh, we almost used them interchangeably, or maybe I did five years ago, and, and it's a great evolution uh, of understanding you know, where the history came with SRI or social responsible investing, where that 
generally in the 40s and 50s, more religious groups that didn't want certain things, uh, generally guns, alcohol, tobacco. But as the time has gone on, those exclusions have grown and grown. And subsequently, I think who uh, those investments are appropriate for or where they um, most uh, uh, tie in, that group has shrunk and shrunk. So ESG is that next evolution um, where you're looking at a company's environmental policies, both positive and negative. Um, efficiency and sustainability equals profitability, right? I think uh, if you're starting to look at input costs in a time where natural resources are becoming more and more scarce, that's important when it comes to investing. Um, the S for social, um, what are, what's a company's policies? Um, is it a perennial best place to work? Um, any of the plant sponsors that are listening know that right now, hiring and retention of talent is so crucial. So it becomes a financial conversation very, very quickly when we do with the S for social. And I think a lot of the, the social elements have br- been brought into the, the news negatively, right? A, uh, a conference call with a pizza company that went to, uh, awry and very quickly the stock price moves. But th- those are the things that are coming up that make this such a relevant conversation, especially when we do with a long-term time horizon of a retiree. And then, the you know, obviously the G for governance, um, where you're looking at boards and are they set up, uh, one, uh, as diversified boards are leading to better performing companies, but also are they, are they operating quarter to quarter or more of a longer term? Um, those are all the exciting things that as you start to delve in, um, for me on the investment side, that's where it really the rubber hits the road. It's not just a feel good. Uh, and I love to see participation in that, you know, as, as both plan sponsors and participants realize, geez, if, if I don't like uh, uh, policies that are happening or, or trends that are, ha- where can I vote with my dollars? That's what that's really where ESG has taken on uh, a lot of legs right now. Right. So I think you're really hitting the nail on the head there. So we have this concept, right? This ESG investing, right? Environmental, social governance investing. So how can I? This is something that it sounds like I care about, right? Um, we are living in times where it becomes increasingly important, especially for younger folks, now that this is kind of this mainstream thing where you can invest not just in, you know, the broad market S&P 500 big companies, but we can get a little bit more powered with technology and get down in the weeds and invest in what matters to us. So how can we really take advantage of this in our daily lives and how can we incorporate this even into our retirement plan, right, with our employer, um, you know, kind of trying to explore the the way that we can make sure that, you know, we can feel like we're making an impact in every with every dollar that we spend. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it just really starts with having those investment options in the plan, of course. Right. Um, but then also having the knowledge and the education and the background on what's what's in the plan, kind of what's under the hood, what what is the actual approach that that investment manager is taking within that fund, um, really to understand what types of themes they might uh, target, whether they're looking at renewable energy right, or maybe because there's not just one type right, of ESG, right? right? So maybe they're looking at broad themes, looking for both opportunities within the environmental, uh, you know companies that are providing solutions there. So a wind turbine manufacturer, obviously that is very much contributing to the fight against climate change. Um, but then you could just have companies that have really good internal social policy policies and that are working within the local community and really helping to lift that up. Um, so really understanding the options that are available to you um, and, and you know talking to your company and, and understanding whether those options are in there. Um, if not, maybe that's a conversation that you can have. Outside of that, of course, you can do that within your personal uh, investments outside of your, you know, your 401k plan. Um, you can, you know, you can go through uh, and talk to your financial advisor outside of that and start to determine which types of approaches might work for you. Um, you know, outside of the investment space, you can also, you know, still vote with your dollars in terms of what types of products you're buying, what types of companies you're buying from, and understanding what their their policies are around that. So there, are, I think there are a lot of different ways that you can start to contribute to some of these things. Yeah, well, I think that the most often times that I, as a financial advisor, get questions about this is when I'm sitting down with an employee in a retirement plan that we work with. And um, most often it's, it's for three Bs, right? Because mm-hmm. we have a lot of nonprofits that we work with here around D.C. And that's usually when I get that question, which is, hey, I see that I'm in this mutual fund in my retirement plan. 
what percentage of this fund is invested in, you know, fossil fuel companies? Can yep. you tell me? Yep. And a lot of times it's really hard to either screen out um, those things that's not really available or um, kind of what, you know, what we were talking about earlier with positive screening is how do I seek out companies that have, you know, that have pluses. So um, companies that do have, you know, um, an equal representation of women on their board or Mm -hmm. things like this. Um, So that can become something that's really important. Um, And this is sort of a mainstream topic that, you know, that is is starting to come up more and more. So it's great that you guys are on the on the forefront of making sure that that's available. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks for listening. Join us next time as Elena, Clarice, and Jonathan continue their discussion on ESG investing. If you have a question that you'd like us to address in a future episode, shoot us an email at info at washfinancial.com. If you enjoy our show, we'd love for you to subscribe on iTunes or wherever you access your podcasts. The opinions voiced in this program are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial, or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities offered through LPL Financial. Member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice offered through Global Retirement Partners, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Global Retirement Partners, Washington Financial Group, a division of Hub International Northeast Limited, and Hub International are not affiliated with LPL Financial. Global Retirement Partners, Washington Financial Group, a division of Hub International Northeast Limited, and Hub International are not affiliated in any way with Natixis Investment Managers.